Hey guys. Whoa, Ryan with the a zoom out and zoom back in real quick. A little um, Wayne's World action right there. Yeah, Ryan is joining me tonight. We're we're doing a mini so this is gonna be like weird for people that are like, where's the normal intro and what episode am I on and what day is it? And I'm real confused. We had to do a mini so I just dropped yesterday. If you haven't listened to it, go listen to the interview with Brock Otten from McKean's where we talk about the draft that is happening on Friday and the Red Wings choices that they have there and what they could do. And then why McKean's ranked us the number one prospect pool. It was a great discussion, mm-hmm. a lot of fun. Uh, so go listen to that. It is on YouTube. It is on Spotify and Apple and all the podcast platforms that you normally listen to stuff on. But we are here tonight to do a quick recap. I figured give it a day to digest. I didn't want to record last night and do a snap, really angry reaction little drop. And, I'm glad and then we just didn't. leave it. And Don't I want to do that, this on emotion. Yeah. And then I thought that maybe give it a day and something else might follow what happened. And it didn't. So. We've got thoughts. We've got stuff that happened. We're going to recap it a little bit. And I think we're going to start with the trade, the first trade. So the trade that really, to me, is decently inconsequential doesn't mean much. Second round pick in the 2024 draft that was originally Tampa's. And Jesse Kiskinen came to Detroit from Nashville for Andrew Gibson. So Andrew Gibson, he was drafted in 2023, second round number 42 overall. He is a defenseman, a right shot defenseman, six foot three, 203 pounds, and had 44 points in 68 games for the Sioux Greyhounds last season. He came over. Breakout year in in the OHL. Yeah. And he came over the tail end of Grand Rapids playoff run. And we're like, hey, look, great. Another right shot defenseman in a A big one. Yeah. But in a giant sea of defensive prospects that the Red Wings have. Now, not all of them are right side, but we have a giant sea of prospects. So we trade him to Nashville for Jesse Kiskinen, who was a third round number 68 overall picked by Nashville. So he was 26 picks past uh, Andrew Gibson. And I'm going to pull up his 2022, 23 and 23, 24 stat in 2022, 23 and 31 games played for the Pelicans under 20 team in uh, the basically like the junior Liga. Uh, He had. 31 games played with 43 points, 20 goals, 23 assists. And in 2023-24, he played 38 games in the Liga with four goals and six assists for 10 points. That's only because he started in the Junior League and in eight games had 14 goals and seven assists for 21 points in eight games. So there's that, which, I mean, it seems from what I've read about him, it seems like he can be an offensive threat. He's six foot, 192 pound, right shot forward, right winger. And does he have NHL upside? Sure. Did Andrew Gibson have NHL upside? Sure. But you traded a defenseman or a forward and you got the ammunition you needed to make your next move. So Ryan, do you make anything out of that first trade besides just swapping position of have to position of need? I think the biggest thing you can take away from it, it we, we've got a ha- happy Lars. Does that count? So that means it's it was a good move in terms yeah, of he's the a fin. we got another winger fin brought over. in the system. Uh huh. But I, I, it's it's interesting because we know that the log jam's there. I mean, maybe that play in by the log jam. I mean, for Grand Rapids and the young guys, we we still don't have an Axel Sandy and Pelica over here. You've got to. You, it's more than clear that he is ahead of Gibson on the pecking order. But it's he's it's so early for both guys that you don't know how things could play out. I mean, I think we were excited because we the what little we did know about him and saw from him there was is a big bodied right handed shot, something they would love to have. Uh so it's 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 interesting. But I mean you've got now another solid winger, a goal scoring playmaking winger that can we'll see what happens. I mean, he's I'm assuming gonna be overseas for another year at least. And we'll we'll see where it goes. So it's it's hard to really go one way or the other as far as oh my god, what happened? Because we're not talking about a ASP, for instance, or a Connor Bedard type player. It's a guy they drafted, they switched essentially picks. It, it is what it is. What was funny about it is that he says like he's who he was asked at the draft who he watches in the league. That's such a and- random thing. One of the people he uh, mentioned was Lucas Raymond. He just really likes Lucas Raymond's style of play, which I thought it was funny for uh, an 18-year-old. So he is six months younger than Andrew Gibson. 
for an 18 year old to say, yeah, I love how that 22 year old played. I uh-huh. thought that was pretty funny. Um, but Tony Ferrari says that uh, Kiskinen is a good energy forward or checks hard, solid two way guy with a decent shot. And I mean, if you're trying to just fill forward positions, especially if you're going to lose some talent in Grand Rapids, it's going to move up eventually. Mm-hmm. Or you see maybe a future in this guy down the line and you traded equal talent for equal talent, maybe. Well, well, even at that point, I think the Grand Rapids one is, I, I think, the best one to focus on a little bit for him because there are there is high end talent in Grand Rapids that won't be far from moving out. And if that can be a supplement to a couple of those guys making their way either into Detroit or they're used as trade ships, we'll see. But it does help that potentially him moving in there. So then the Red Wings took that second round pick in this year's draft that they got from the we National make sure Pre- everyone's sitting down, even though they probably already know what happens. Yeah, it's so it was Tampa's pick, so it's a later second round pick. And they traded it along with Jake Wallman to the San Jose Sharks for future considerations. Now, my initial reaction was, is that really all you could have got for Jake Wallman is future considerations? Um in initial and we still don't know like there was a report that came out today where they said a bunch of gm said that if we would have been offered that we would have taken it all day but i'm guessing because san jose has such a low cap hit right now like they need to hit the floor they're They're, arizona like wait almost every other year utah now whatever asterisk utah arizona in parentheses um the team they have to hit the the floor yeah they have to hit the floor so san jose there's going to be another move. It was talked about on Locked On. Uh, I confirmed it again that you can't just trade for future considerations anymore. In order to put that, you basically have to get approval by the league to do a future considerations trade, meaning that something is going to happen. I'm guessing that something is going to happen relatively quickly. You can't wait like a year to give back the future considerations or whatever. Yeah. It- so if the Red Wings are planning on making a big trade that would make sense that San Jose could toss the Red Wings a pick. The Red Wings could throw something else to San Jose. And then at that point you have recouped your future consideration on the Jake Wallman trade. I just, I sat and I thought about it and we got messages from a few people and there are rumblings out there that it could have been a team and player issue. Um, he was scratched towards the end of the season. Mates, not no, no, just at the teammate level. Management against player and coaching, coaching against player. Yeah, essentially. But the more I looked at it, the more I said, "Huh," because you saw at the end of the season he was scratched, and we all thought it was because of oh. nagging injury. But then there was an interesting comment by uh, Derek Lalone, who basically said that Jake Wallman wasn't himself toward the end of the season. And we thought that that meant, oh, well, he was just hurt and had an injury. But if you remember, there was never an injury. He was never like on IR with a lower body. He he was not placed on anything. He was a healthy scratch. Yeah. So saying he's not himself and giving him the healthy scratch. When after and I pulled these up too, the first 31 games of the season, he had 13 points, six goals and seven assists. The last 32 games of the season, he had six goals and two assists for eight points, but was a minus four compared to a plus two. So a lot of people were also pointing back to... still averaged about the same amount of ice time. Yeah, almost identical. People were pointing back to, well, did he just start to kind of mail it in after getting the contract? Did he get the contract, say, I've got my money, now I don't need to listen to anyone because I'm locked in or whatever? I mean, it's all really weird because you think that a guy like that would have value, like someone would give you something for that, a good, a decent contract, a young defenseman. But then you look back into what he was initially traded for in San Jose to come here that you thought that, wow, that's like he came out, he came in, he exploded, he did well. And now he's out just the same, basically same way he came in. So there's got to be more to the story that we will never know more than likely. But I can't just say that and a GM as smart as Steve Eiserman just gives away Jake Wallman because he needs to cut a contract. Well, I mean, we're going to start seeing moves like this probably over the next couple of days, to be honest. I mean, we, we can even go back. You go back to, yes, he was retired, but they just to offload Datsuk. Detroit gave up 
what ended up being a Jake Chikrin. In the Congratulations to Pavel Datsuk on being inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame, by the way. That's all we're going to... I figured we could actually end on that. But okay, Greg, let's just bring that one up. Yay! The Magic Man Hall of Fame. Thanks for just ruining that moment. You're welcome. Um, but no, that, that, that led to us getting the Chalowski, but that was strictly the cap dump that it, it cost us a first. You, you look at just a couple of years ago, and apparently it really upset people that I tried to bring this point up. We took on Mark Stahl's contract and got a second round pick out of it. And what did we give them? Future considerations. But that's sometimes what has to happen. There's a trade pending right now between Vancouver and Chicago. Ilya Mikheyev is being traded to Chicago with a second round pick and a pending unrestricted free agent in Sam Lafferty. The Canucks are getting back a fourth rounder. These are all salary dumps, but again, a second round pick is attached to a guy that's pretty well known. I mean, is it just the point now that we are we overvalued him because of some of the things that he did? I, I don't really know. You could take it a lot of different ways, but at the same time, the the second round pick we didn't have, but what twenty minutes? Yeah, just about. Nah, yeah, maybe not even. Could you have used that for another player? Possibly. There, there was no attachment there, and for people to be upset about, oh, they gave a, they gave him a second round pick. We didn't have it; it wasn't our pick. It was a late second rounder, as it was. It, it, it is what it is. That's, the, but that's the cost of offloading a salary. If it was only for one more year, I think for him, it wouldn't have. Po- it probably would have been maybe a higher pick. But you're taking on two years of over six million dollars total. So to me, that's why it makes sense. Part of it is because he is a fan favorite. I mean, he had the, the sellies yeah. and he was he was energetic and he was started the whole I'm going to give back to the community thing. And then he's gone and people are like, well, he was your second best defenseman. I said, yeah, until like Simon Edvinson came in, like Simon Edvinson is now your second best defenseman. And to go off of the whole you gave up an amazing defenseman for nothing. If you look, according to Evolving Hockey, look at his 2022-23 season. He had an overall score of 92. He's in the 92nd percentile, 74th percentile in offense, uh, 95th percentile in defense. If you look at his 2023-24 season, he was in the 27th percentile, still high 71 percentile offense for defensemen, but a fourth percentile defense. His defense dropped off a cliff. Well, his offense dropped a little, and that's 5v5. But you you didn't get the same Jake Wallman last year that you got in 2022-23. It wasn't the same player, and you could tell. And, and, and I mean, even to that point, we'd have to go back and look at the matchups, but we know that they weren't getting thrown to the Wolves like him and Sider were this past season. And that's not to say that was the worst thing in the world, but you could tell that it weighed them down, and it blew the analytics darlings minds when you would try to compare cider from paper to the actual watching the games and what he's doing on the ice. And it didn't make sense. So it's, it, it's a little bit of that situation, but at the same time, he really was just not good defensively last season. And if you're being on a top pair, which they so heavily relied with him, you need to be good. And that's why we ultimately saw our favorite combo, which actually worked out pretty well as the season came to a close of Ben Chirot and Mo Sider. The goals and fanfare that he provided, it, it was awesome, but he essentially made himself expendable. And now the fact that we have a Simon Evanson coming in, that we saw what he did at the end of the year, there's no way, barring some crazy, insane meteor hitting, that he's going to be sent back to Grand Rapids. You got Elwood Johansson, who has to make the roster. That opens up an opportunity for him now, depending on what they eventually still do in free agency. To me, it just it makes sense at this point. I think the biggest thing is it opens a roster spot, like you said, for someone like Johansson. It rids you of cap, so you now have about $33 million in free cap. You still have to yep. sign Cider and Raymond because those contracts aren't done yet. And it, I mean, I guess it just, that's that's the biggest thing, is it makes room. It makes room in both the roster and the cap. and. I had talked about it, I think, last week. I had brought it up. Maybe it was in Discord that Jake Wallman's probably a guy you're going to have to move on from eventually. Hmm. And But I think, again, the rub is just 
you didn't really get you didn't get anything for him. But like you said, you really didn't give anything for him either because that second round pick was not yours. You basically just gave him away. So take the second round pick out of the equation. Say we just gave him to San Jose and San Jose still owes us something. So yeah. something is going to happen. Now, could that be retained salary? Sure. Could it be that they just throw us a seventh round pick in 2028? Yeah, that's totally a possibility. You could get the rights to somebody, maybe. But I don't, I don't want to set myself up for disappointment by saying, oh my God, this is some part of some huge trade. We're going to uh, do a three-way trade with Toronto and San Jose, and we're going to get Mitch Marner, and San Jose is going to like take $5 million of the contract. I'm not going to do that. Because in all likelihood, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's going to probably be something much smaller. Maybe you trade Justin Hole to the Chicago Blackhawks and San Jose retains half of Justin Hole, so he's only a million dollars or something. And there you get rid of another contract. I don't, but I don't think it's going to be part of some huge blockbuster deal because as soon as this happened, all of the talking heads were like, Steve Eiserman's cooking. Something huge is coming. We're waiting for something huge with Steve Eiserman. Well, except for nothing's happened so far. So true. But I mean, now, and it does help that they, they opened up so much more cap. We're now seeing Detroit linked to essentially every top tier free agent. Yeah, I just tweeted uh, a minute ago the Red Wings are now linked to Jake DeBrusque. So they're linked to Gensel DeBrusque. Who else? Uh, Thomas Shabbat, uh, Shabbat, John Gibson. Um, Stan Peels hasn't been mentioned, but they're not going to talk about that probably until he nope. they confirm he's going to still in on Patrick Kane, Kane, yeah, Justice Bear, uh, Martin Nietzsche's, Nietzsche's. They're probably going to get thrown into Tara Vinen. Iserman Hale has the cap to be in on everyone, really. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm not. I can't get that hyped up about it because if I do, and then nothing like extraordinary happens, then. If nothing I'll extraordinary happens, especially when it comes to the free agency aspect, because there are some big names, potentially, that you hope they're not making an overpay for. He made it very clear at the end of the season that the defense has to be better. We just talked about how the, well, Jake Wallman was easily not one of the better defensemen. I'm not saying that it was all the time, but as the season went on, it did not get better. For a guy that has been back and forth because where was he at St. Louis? Yep. On the outside looking in there, came into Detroit, set it off, set the world on fire, but then kind of went back to how things were with St. Louis. Take that as you will. So just, I guess, to wrap it up on the Jake Wallman thing, I'm not as hurt by it. That's why I let it sit. Not as hurt by it as I was yesterday. Because you know something else is coming, but I'm not expecting that something else coming in this that involves the Jake Wallman trade to be gigantic. Well, maybe we're doing this too early because buyout window opens up tomorrow. So, yeah, which again, I mean, we'll, we could talk about that on Monday. But uh, what are your feelings now? The other thing is, what are your feelings on John Gibson? Because that is the goalie that people are linking the Red Wings to the most. And I am uh, not super thrilled by it. Um, at this point, it's several years past when I would have liked to have had him in Detroit. I mean, he's 30. yeah. John he's Gibson three years ago would have been exciting. Yeah, I mean, he's about to turn thirty-one. What's his current contract right now? Uh, AAV is five million dollars. I think for another C for another couple seasons. Let's see, Puckapedia. I'm trying to get myself accustomed to Puckapedia. Uh, six. Oh, 6.4 million, and he's in year six of eight. Oh, it, they better retain half that salary if they're, unless, unless it's going to be a, a hockey trade and either a Huso or a Lion are out, is going to be going out, and then you bring in a Gibson, maybe I'd be okay with it. When you look at his hockey reference last year on the last couple of years on what have not been good Anaheim teams. It, it's tough to really gauge what you're going to get. And I think that's what's worrisome to me. Yeah, I agree. Like I said, if you, if you would have told me we were getting John Gibson a few years ago, I would have been like super psyched. Like when yeah, we signed Billy Huso. He has a dozen of votes. Like, yeah. 
when we signed Huso, you told me it was, we were getting Gibson instead. That's a fantastic time. But in 53 games played in 2022-23, he had an 899 save percentage and a 399 goals against. <laughs> and last season in 2023-24 in 46 games played, he had an 888 uh, save percentage and a 354 goals against. So we have, we have again, those were bad already. teams. Yeah, we have enough of that over here. Sure, they were bad teams, but he was not good. That's, and I mean, he's, on the other side well about to be he's on the 30 he is 30 and i just no, it doesn't july 14th get me excited. in like three weeks he'll be 31 yeah so it doesn't get me excited like john john gibson right now is, is not doing anything for me and if if eiserman does that because he's specifically said i'm not looking for a short-term like patchwork goalie he want if he's going to get a goalie and he's going to trade pieces he wants a goalie that's going to be here for a while. And that's why I said, like, you could trade for UC Saros and you could give him a five year contract. And then you could make in a couple years Kosa his backup. And then a couple years later, tandem him and Kosa. That's fine. I just, Gibson, I, I would be even less happy if you traded for Gibson and then signed him to like a five year deal. I mean, because you look at it, Huso's 29, he'll be, thir- he'll be 30 come next February. And then you've actually got Alex Lyon. I mean, if Alex Lyons, you're the return that you're sending out, you're trading a 30. He's 31. He'll be 32 in December. It's not exciting. Like I wanted yeah. to be excited by a goalie trade. That's not exciting. <laughs> like, I, I don't like the contract over anything because you're getting a guy that again, has been with some bad teams. You're, are you going to get the three, nine, nine goals against, or are you going to get, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, the three nine nine goals against. Or are you going to get the two nine eight or the two eight four, which we haven't seen something as a two eight four from Gibson since eighteen nineteen. I want the 2015, 2016, 207 goals against with a nine two zero save percentage. Can you give me that? Can we get rookies, a time machine? His rookie year. Yeah, we need a time machine God. in the trade. Actually, well, he had twenty three games played the season before, but yeah, forty games played with a nine two zero save percentage and a two zero seven goals against. And uh, he was on the all rookie team, placed seventh in Calder votes, won the Jennings trophy and placed seventh in Vesna. So there's a goalie in there, but I think that goalie is is slowly fading away. Who did he win the Jennings with? Oh, Freddie Anderson that year. Yep. So I think that's that's going to be our mini update. I mean, again, we're probably going to have to record another emergency thing if something else big happens. Like, if uh, the other half is if they s- assign Shane Gosses Bear after basically saying last week that he's exploring the open market. And if they bring him back on like a five and a half million dollar deal, I will also be kind of upset. I- I'm, I'm more interested to see if anything happens uh, starting tomorrow than over the next 48 hours when the buyout window opens. Great. And if things do happen before I post this, uh, we will be, we'll just add on to it. That's what we'll do. We'll just hit record again and we'll splice the two together. Uh, Ryan socials. I already ran 33. Yeah, we are at Grindline pod. I'm at bringing the wing. Go check us out on YouTube. Check us out on the hockey podcast network or wherever your, uh, podcasts are found by searching the Grindline podcast and check out vintage Detroit. Um, that's gonna do it for us tonight in this little mini sode and you stay classy. Hockey Town.